everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Taking His Hand podcast presented by truthbooks.com. I'm Lance Taylor, the Director of Operations here at CEI Bookstore and Truth Publications, and I'm happy to be joined today by Brother Bobby Graham. Uh, Brother Graham is going to be one of our keynote speakers in the upcoming Truth Lectures uh, event that will be held at Athens Bible School. He'll be speaking on the Thursday night uh, at 7.30. We'll have a singing leading into it beginning at 7. Brother Graham, really glad for you to be with us today. Thank you, Lance. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with these podcast episodes and such, and especially leading up to lectures, we're trying to bring you some information and let you get to know some of our speakers and so forth. And uh, we welcome your feedback. We'd invite you to let us know of things that you would like to hear us talk about uh, by emailing us at podcast at truthbooks.com. Uh, Brother Graham, maybe tell us a little bit just right off the top about your participation in this upcoming lectureship. It's been a long time coming since we had to postpone it last summer, uh, but your topic in particular is Am I Ready for the End, which is really a good uh, kind of closing point, I guess, if you will, to this lectureship that's talking about the end times and everything surrounding it. Well, I'm happy to participate. Yes, it has been a long time coming because I prepared the material a couple of years ago, I was called and asked whether I would be willing to speak on that final night. They said, uh, what we want you to do this time is just preach preach an old-fashioned sermon. <laughs> Are you ready or, or am I ready for the end, I think is the official title. Yeah. But I'm sure that night I'll get around to asking the question, Are you ready? Although I'll ask it of myself as well. And I do think it's a very important subject that we need to consider because of extremes. So often people start setting dates and uh, go to the extreme of second-guessing the Lord, thinking that they know something that the Lord says they can't know. And then on other occasions, there are those who say, well, it's already happened. There's nothing for us to look forward to. So I think it's an important subject for us to, or question for us to consider. Absolutely. And when you look at this year's lectureship, uh, so many of those questions are covered. I think that's one of the great uh, draws to this year's lectures. If you can join us in person here in Athens, uh, July 12 through 15, that would be great. Or if you can join us with the live stream, that'd be great. And then the recordings will be available. And, and the books, so I've got both of those featured up here. This is all in book form already available for sale on our website at truthbooks.com. The second book is a study guide, which uh, we'll have more to say about, especially during the lectureship. It's not for sale yet online, uh, but we'll be uh, making it available very, very soon. So keep that in mind and be looking for the announcement for it. Uh, but it's going to take you through kind of question by question inside the lectures to kind of get a deeper understanding of it. Um, but I think, you know, so many people are concerned about these things, like you said. If, if you could pick one or two maybe key points out of your lecture in particular, uh, what would they be maybe for those that, that are thinking about attending and thinking about these things? One of those would have to be uh, the major emphasis which I place in the lesson on the last day. The Bible talks about the last day. And the uh, Bible also mentions the first day of time. <laughs> and uh, a lot more, though, is said in the Scriptures about the last day than is said about the first day. And yet there's so much speculation about both of them. People, people think they know, people want to know, but uh, the simple matter, fact of the matter is we don't know when it's coming. But there's going to be a last day. And in that lesson, I'll emphasize that it's going to be a busy day, a day of much activity, because there's several events, end events, that are going to transpire on that day, and we'll talk about it during that time. And then, of course, too, as far as practical matters are concerned, I would say the most important thing is, am I ready for that day, since I don't know when it's coming? There's no way for me to know. The signs are not there. Signs in passages like Matthew 24 are often misconstrued as applying to the last day. They're, they don't apply to that. They apply to the end of Jerusalem. But am I ready? Am I, am I doing what I need to do to be ready? And I'll tell you what the Bible says about preparing for that last day. Again, that's going to be on the Thursday night, the final night. So the lectures begin on Monday, July 12th, 
uh, starts with an evening session at 7 o'clock with singing, 7.30 lecture, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday we'll have daytime lectures from 8 a.m. till noon on the hour. We'll have day lectures, including women's tracks at 11 a.m. Uh, for the ladies who would like to join. Um, and then, again, that Thursday night we'll wrap it up. We're, we're also looking forward to a Wednesday afternoon session uh, where we'll have some question and answer discussion, open forum discussion um, at 2.30 on Wednesday afternoon. Um, Brother Graham, maybe shift gears a little bit, and I want to talk about a couple of other things. You are heavily involved in our uh, effort to produce this monthly magazine, Truth Magazine. You have a question and answer column that, as we were talking before this, I believe has been running since about 2006. Uh, maybe talk a little bit about that work in particular and the things that um, you take away from that and maybe what might interest our, our possible readers or future readers of that. Well, it's been it's been a challenging assignment at times because uh, I do things besides answer the questions. <laughs> I have other uh, concerns that fill my schedule each day. But uh, it's a work that I've really enjoyed. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, those questions come to me sometimes by telephone, sometimes by email. I've had a few send them uh, by snail mail, the old-fashioned <laughs> way. Uh, and they do get there. They come to me. Uh, and sometimes when I see people in gospel meetings where I am, uh, they'll say, I have a question for you. I'll say, write it down, <laughs> and I'll be glad to deal with it. So I have, I have a number of questions come in those different ways. Uh, just recently, I was teaching Bible one week over at the Rustic Youth Camp. I yeah. always volunteer to go over there the June session. And uh, the last two times I've been over there, this year and the year before, because last year was canceled, right. just like the lectures were because of the virus. But for the last two sessions that I've been a part of over there, I would teach a class in the morning and then turn it over to my assistant for the afternoon and would go and uh, do a question and answer session for high school students. Uh, they, they've been using me in that way. So uh, some of the questions that I'm in the process of answering right now are questions that I received then. Now, I gave initial answers to them then. Right. Uh, and to some extent, uh, I'm supplementing, yeah. but not very much what I gave them on those occasions. But they will appear in the paper, too. Yeah. They came from real questions that people ask during that question and answer session at the camp. It's always a popular column. We get some feedback inside the store often about that, so really thankful for that. But not only that, Brother Graham, you've also been uh, one of our authors, um, continue to, to sell these publications. This one on the Apostle Paul, maybe talk for a minute about that work in particular and how people might benefit from this study. Well, this workbook on the life of Paul is a part of a series. There's a whole series on major Bible characters, and this is one of them. Uh, I had some good help in putting that workbook together. Uh, technology has not been my forte. <laughs> uh, I do use a computer. Uh, I, I have an iPad. I even have a flip phone. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in doing this uh, workbook on the life of Paul, I tried to present some information, some material that would be very relevant to issues and questions that people ask, uh, which usually blend into some false teaching, into some error. So in the, this material, I talk, for instance, about the Lord's appearing to him there on the Damascus Road. Uh, I'm not trying to downplay or minimize the importance of that appearance, that miraculous appearance at all. It, it was essential. It was essential, number one, to his learning who Jesus really was. In the past, he'd been a pretender to Paul. He'd been a fake or a fraud to, the, to Saul. But now, because he sees him in his glorified or majestic state in heaven at the right hand of God, just as Stephen did in Acts 7, uh, Paul is able to say, I've seen him, I know he's the Son of God, and thus he left behind his father's religion. He repented. He said, I'm going to become a Christian. 
And I deal with that, I especially focus on that appearance because so much that the Lord said there about the purpose of His appearing to Saul was to make him a witness and to qualify him to go out teaching Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And so I talk about that quite extensively in a couple of the lessons. But uh, it's divided into his different travels, yeah. uh, the, his conversion, his childhood years. There again, we don't know a lot about his childhood, but we know some things mm -hmm. from what the Bible does reference. Well, I certainly would recommend it. And like you said, it's a part of a, uh, a study, uh, a series of lessons on great Bible characters. So you can not only study about Paul, but others as well. And that It has series. plenty of maps and even some pictures of archaeological finds. That uh, that's the help I received. Yeah, I, I couldn't put those in it. I didn't know how. I knew how to write the material, but I didn't know how to put. We those all have into our it. specialties, right? <laughs> uh, and then another feature product that we want to share with you too is the the Truth Commentary. Again, part of a series commentaries that uh, span some twenty six plus volumes of the the Bible. Uh, but uh, the Minor Prophets 1 book in particular covering Hosea through Micah. Talk a little bit about that, your con contribution to that work as well. I was happy to join with a, uh, a fine group of writers in producing this material. Mine was, my assignment was the book of Hosea, the first of the Minor Prophets, the first of the twelve. Uh, Hosea is very important in helping us to understand something about God's long-suffering or enduring nature. Hosea challenged the people of Israel repeatedly over the several years that he was a prophet. He challenged them with his rebukes, his warnings, his reminders. Uh, but the main point was get right with God. Prepare because the time is coming when you're going to meet Him. As a nation, as a people, yes, but also as individuals. And so what Hosea had to say was relevant even to what we're discussing yeah. here about the lectures Absolutely. this week. So I definitely recommend that to you. You can find these online at truthbooks.com or in the CEI bookstore. Um, and you, if you search for the classic truth commentaries, these are in the original hardback covers. Uh, you'll find the full offering of those, and we have some really special prices running on those uh, as well. So, Brother Graham, I really appreciate you taking time to share all this with us. Uh, maybe in closing a little bit, share a little bit more about uh, things besides this. You're heavily involved in uh, good efforts at Athens Bible School, and also you mentioned your gospel meetings and the various places that you speak. Maybe tell our audience who maybe do not know as much about you and that side of things, uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Well. I came to Athens Bible School to teach in Limestone County to preach in August of 1967. Uh, I've been with the school most of those years. There have been a few times, like when I went to Virginia to preach and to work on my master's degree in school administration when I was not there. Other times I've lived in Huntsville, uh, but I would come over and help with the lectures or write Bible curriculum material. Uh, but was not always teaching in the classroom for a few of those years. But for most of those years, I've been teaching at Athens Bible School. I came as a junior and senior English teacher, as well as high school Bible teacher. Uh, but now in my late years, I have uh, shifted to the other end. I'm teaching upper elementary Bible and love it because those children have attitudes that are so receptive to the teaching of the Bible. They haven't uh, become hardened by experiences in life. They're much more resilient, much more yielding, and willing to make changes. So I teach fifth and sixth grade Bible. I do Genesis one year. The next year I do Acts, both of them books of beginnings. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides that, I, I've directed elementary chapel since the 1970s when a man who was there uh, retired, or no, didn't retire, he went to the county schools, uh, Don Osborne. Mm -hmm. uh, I took over his role. I'd been helping him in the past with elementary chapel, but I took over as the one directing elementary chapel. And I continue doing that until this day. I'm there at the school about an hour each morning. I do not 
continue my work of regular uh, located preaching work with one congregation. I've been out of that now for about three and a half years, but I, I preach in a lot of meetings. I had 10 canceled last year because of the virus and uh, some rescheduled for this year, some for next. But when I'm not in meetings, uh, I'm just virtually always preaching, filling in here and there. Sometimes three times on a Sunday, sometimes twice on a Sunday. Most of the time, uh, more than more than one time on a Sunday. But I'm very busy on Wednesdays. I go over to Lauderdale County, my home county, teach a Bible class over there every Wednesday night for a congregation. Have been doing that ever since I semi-retired. <laughs> so Doesn't I, sound like retirement. <laughs> 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 well, Brother Graham, we really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, folks listening, really appreciate you joining us as well. I uh, want to invite you and give a warm welcome to you to come and be with us, especially at Athens Bible School during the lectureship. Again, it's Truth Lectures, July 12th through 15th. You can find the schedule online at truthbooks.com or truthlectures.com. And uh, we also invite you to tune in for the live streaming. We'll do that via our Facebook page, but you'll also be able to watch the live feed at truthlectures.com. I'm glad you're going to live stream because many people can't come, but there's nothing like being there live. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and especially for the singings, I, I want to really encourage you to come and be a part of that. So many have missed out on opportunities to sing together over the last year. Uh, but our plan is to sing together on Monday night at 7, Tuesday night at 7, and again on Thursday night at 7. So I hope you'll come and be our guest. Uh, again, thank you, Brother Graham, for joining us. Thank, thank you, you to for everybody asking. for listening. I want to encourage you until next time to keep taking his hand as we help each other toward that heavenly home. Amen.